are incredible. Number 15, the Counter Assault Team. Members of the Secret Service have to be prepared for any and every threat that comes their way, but each person has a specific role to play in this. The most visible are the personal bodyguards that are always seen walking next to the President and ride in vehicles with him, but there's far more support nearby. The Counter Assault Team, for example, is a specialized tactical unit that supports the protective division of the Secret Service and closely follow behind motorcades and are present at any location the President or someone under protection appears. In contrast to the protective personnel whose role is to prevent the protected people from being injured and to evacuate them to a safe place as soon as possible, the Counter Assault Team are the ones who will actively track down the threat and eliminate it. Dressed all in black, they're typically armed with SR-16 assault rifles, a pistol and flashbang grenades, and buy valuable time for the protective team to carry out their role. Being selected for the counter-assault team is no mean feat. Applicants have to be able to complete three pull-ups while wearing a 45-pound weighted vest and be able to run one and a half miles in under nine minutes. Requirements and training are so tough that only one in 10 who make it to the program ultimately join the team. Number 14, The Beast. As well as being responsible for running the most powerful nation on Earth, the President is also the figurehead for the country and is required to attend public events both domestically and internationally. It's during journeys like this that the greatest threats can be encountered, so to keep the President safe, the Secret Service uses a pimped out Cadillac that's known as the Beast. Also called Cadillac One, there's room for seven passengers and it's the most protected vehicle on Earth. Weighing as much as 20,000 pounds, it's actually built upon the chassis of a GM truck, but has Cadillac headlamps and grill to keep the aesthetic look. At an estimated cost of one and a half million dollars, the Beast is hermetically sealed to keep the occupants safe from biological attacks. It has run flat tires, night vision cameras, and has smoke screens and an oil slick device that can be used to protect against any vehicles that may be chasing it. Furthermore, it's bomb and bulletproof with aluminum, ceramic, and steel armor that's up to eight inches thick. And the doors themselves are each thought to weigh as much as those on a Boeing 757, but unlike those on the aircraft, can actually electrify the handles to prevent unwanted guests from entering. Number 13, working the rope. Most presidential engagements are planned well ahead of time and give the Secret Service ample opportunity to scout the area and ensure there are no points of vulnerability. But when you're looking after the leading figure in the free world, things don't always go to plan. Sometimes the president will make impromptu stops at locations or take part in a meet and greet which hadn't been scheduled. And this is said to be the most anxious time for any Secret Service agent. Of course, they're trained to cope with this eventuality with a technique that's called working the rope. They're more than aware that threats can present themselves from virtually any direction. And no matter how harmless someone in the crowd may seem, they could just be a matter of seconds away from launching an attack. You'll have noticed how they always wear dark shades, and these perform two vital roles. First is to stop anyone from knowing where they're looking, and what they're doing is quickly looking around at everyone nearby to see what's in their hands or if there's any suspicious activity. And they don't want any potential aggressors to know that they've been spotted. The other purpose of the glasses is to protect their eyes from any liquids that may be thrown at them or bright lights that may be shown at them, ensuring that they can continuously keep on the job at hand and ensure the president's safety. Number 12, eagerness to learn new things. While it's not an absolute prerequisite to being a Secret Service agent, an eagerness to learn new things definitely helps a lot with fitting into the role. The president is accompanied whenever they go outside, and if they take part in an activity, the agents have to go along for the ride with them. Ronald Reagan, for example, was a keen horse rider, so his details soon had to learn how to ride a horse themselves to keep up. Clinton, on the other hand, was more of a runner, so his bodyguards found themselves running five miles each day and had to be extremely fit to be able to do that while performing their jobs to the required level at the same time. Recent presidents, of course, have spent more time on the golf course, so agents may find themselves playing around too, which all means that working in the Secret Service, you never know what's quite going to happen every day you go into work. You have to be prepared to learn new things very quickly. Number 11, the advanced detail. Whenever the president is scheduled to travel somewhere other than the places that are continuously kept to an adequate level of security, an advanced team is sent from the Secret Service to scout the route, assess any potential dangers, and make sure things will go exactly to plan. 
Often, these advanced teams will travel weeks or even months ahead of visit, and they're required to map out emergency escape routes from each destination, critical entry points, places where they may encounter a risk of fire or choke points that would be the most likely places an attack would begin. And these are all reported back to Central Command, so everyone can be briefed about what to expect. Critically, both walking and driving routes are planned, and at least two backup exit strategies are arranged just in case the main route is compromised. Possibly the most discouraging thing about this job is that since presidential diaries are changing all the time, agents may spend huge amounts of time planning for trips like these, and it amounts to nothing because the trip is canceled at the last minute. Number 10. They supervise chefs. Historically, heads of state had food tasters whose sole responsibility was to take a mouthful of every meal that's served to make sure it isn't poisoned before the important people have some. And while there are rumors that this still happens in the White House, officially at least, it doesn't. Instead, the whole process by which food arrives in front of the president is closely monitored, and sometimes the length that agents have to go to do this are unbelievable. First of all, any food that's sent in for the president from a farm wanting to offer its latest variety of beef jerky to a little old lady who's baked a cake is thrown in the trash immediately, because you can never totally be sure who sent it. Next, the supply chain of every ingredient that's provided to the White House is meticulously investigated. And once it's given the thumbs up, companies are added to a list of trusted suppliers and undergo random inspections from that point on. Chefs in the kitchen, despite being trusted members of the White House staff, will always be watched over by agents while they're preparing food for the president to make sure they don't do anything untoward to it. But there is one surprising aspect. No such rules apply to if the president wants to order a pizza or a takeaway. Instead, it's simply ordered to a nearby building so there's no way the staff at the restaurant know who it's going to. The chances of something bad happens are drastically reduced. Number 9. The president is never alone. Becoming part of the Secret Service means you're willing to do whatever it takes for your country. While no oath is specifically required to say that you'll protect the president at all costs, that's one of the expectations of the role. But thankfully, very few agents that we know of are actually put in that position. One thing they do have to contend with, though, is the fact that the president can never be left alone without a member of the security detail. This means that when they're in the most private of moments outside of the White House, an agent has to be nearby, including doctor's appointments, strategic conversations, and even when they have to go to the bathroom. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Protective Intelligence as such a high-profile figure, the president receives a surprising number of threats each day, from angry tweets to letters, video broadcasts, and phone calls to the White House switchboard. And while most of these come from people who pose no actual harm to the leader, the Secret Service don't take any chances. Known as protective intelligence, this division takes a proactive approach to potential dangers. Each and every threat is investigated and can involve doing a full background check on the individual involved, which may even include interviewing neighbors, family members, and work colleagues. And based upon the results, a decision is made. In the least serious cases, a warning is issued. But if the threat is more concerning or the person has been warned before, they risk being either forcibly sent for psychiatric evaluation and face an unlimited amount of time in a facility to help overcome their problems. Or if they're deemed to be of sound mind, they're charged with a Class E felony that can result in large fines and extended jail time. The Secret Service has a surprisingly wide remit when it comes to this and can prosecute offenders even with very minimal evidence. Number 7. They protect anyone at risk. The Secret Service are mainly associated with the responsibility of protecting the president. But they are in fact in charge of the security of everyone whose life may be at risk in the line of governmental service. Once someone has been elected into the role of president or vice president, they have a Secret Service detail for the rest of their lives. With the only exception being that they can change this to a private security contractor once they've left the White House. When it comes to other members or staff, things are taken on a case-by-case -case basis. If a policy announcement proves to be rather controversial, the person behind it may be protected until it blows over, and all close relatives of the president are protected while he's in office to the extent where they even escort children to school and stand guard outside of the classroom until lessons have finished. This can prove to be a vital and reassuring role to the White House staff members, and it's been used to good effect in recent years. 
Following the September 11th terrorist attacks, for example, several White House staff were escorted at the request of President Bush to both ensure that they were safe and to be certain that the fear for their own life wouldn't impact the difficult decisions that were having to be made. Number six, the water rescue detail. The primary function of the Secret Service is to ensure that the president is protected at all costs, no matter where they go, which requires several specialized agents to be on hand just in case. The water rescue detail, for example, is one of the most elite departments in the Secret Service and consists of highly trained personnel who are taught techniques to retrieve people from the harshest of water conditions. You may wonder how likely a threat this actually is, but it's not as a rare problem as you might think. Harold Holt, who was elected Australian Prime Minister in the 1960s, went missing in 1967 while swimming in the ocean and was never seen again. With U.S. presidents seemingly unable to resist the lure of a waterside photo opportunity, agents are trained at Kitty Hawk, where they're taught the techniques of rescue from riptides and strong waves, which are a cause of at least 80% of ocean incidents. Number 5. Ink Tags in the modern age, we're quite used to the idea that any message we post online, no matter how many precautions we take, could eventually be traced back to us. And this not only allows security services to find potential aggressors, but makes people think twice before making dangerous comments in the first place. You might then think that sending a letter is a safer bet, but it turns out the Secret Service has for decades had a sneaky way of narrowing down where these have come from too. They're able to conduct handwriting analysis, which can often lend clues to the culprit, but there's always the chance they have cheated this method or simply printed the letter from a computer. To counteract this, the Secret Service has a vast database that it maintains in collaboration with ink manufacturers and holds the details of chemical tags that are added during the manufacturing process that show which brand made the ink used in a letter and usually shows which country and potentially which state or store it was sold in. By using this information, they can at least narrow down the search parameters and significantly increase the chance of finding who wrote the letter. Number 4. They Film Everything The Zapruder footage of John F. Kennedy's assassination in 1963 is one of the most widely watched and renowned pieces of film ever recorded. And while it doesn't prove who was responsible for the fatal shot, it provided a wealth of learning for Secret Service personnel for how to deal with a similar event in the future. It shows how quickly things can spiral out of control and is still shown in training sessions to this day. Aware of how invaluable it has been, it's now Secret Service protocol to film every motorcade and event that the president is a part of, because this too could prove to be incredibly important if an incident occurs. At least it may help identify someone who makes an attempt on the president's life. And at the worst, if someone's successful with an attack, it'll provide future generations of Secret Service personnel information on where their weaknesses lie and where improvements in security can be made. Number three, spare blood. Despite traveling in the most secure car in the world and being surrounded by a private detail of security personnel and bodyguards who scout and scour everywhere the president is going, there's always a slim chance that this won't be enough and that the leader of the free world will come to harm. If this does happen, the Secret Service takes every precaution needed to give him the best chance of recovery. Wherever the president goes, for example, a trusted doctor accompanies him close behind, and the Secret Service has at all times details of the fastest route to the nearest hospital. Bags of the president's blood are also carried in the back of the beast, and in a car that's following behind to ensure that if it's needed, there's always a batch of compatible and healthy blood ready to be infused. Number two, no distractions. It's easy to assume that bodyguards take on extra roles beyond being responsible for protecting their primary's life. And in many cases, this may well be the case. Often you'll see a picture of celebrity being followed by a burly security guard who's carrying their grocery bags, but that's not within the remit of the Secret Service. They are professionals at the top of their game, deserve to be respected as such, cannot risk doing anything that will distract them from their primary mission. Apparently, Vice President Walter Mondale once asked of his detail to pick up his laundry for him and was told in no uncertain terms that it's not what the Secret Service is there for. In theory, at least, this also extends to talking to people that they're protecting too, and you'll rarely see an agent interacting with the President unless they're within the absolute safety of the White House or other protected area, when they can let their guard down a little. Number 1. Fake Shootings Secret Service agents aren't simply trained to a high level of proficiency and sent on the job. They also have to know exactly how they react in various eventualities and actively prepare for them, 
For example, if you're responsible for taking a bullet for the president, how would you know if the way you moved would put your body in between the shooter and the target? And would you still be able to provide further protection once you're hit? To practice this, agents take part in scenario training, where someone plays the role of the president and the others have to assess their surroundings and take him to the target destination without being harmed at all. During these sessions, rubber bullets are used, but each agent is purposefully shot several times to ensure they can endure the hit and continue with the objective at hand. It's no substitute for the pain and impact of the real thing, but it's the closest that they can ethically get. Subscribe to Top 5s for more and check out some of our other popular videos.